Alright, so I'm gonna tell you guys about something that I've been into lately. Uh, called the, well, some people call it the quantified self, but I like to call it the data selfie. And it's this idea that you can get an idea of who you are by collecting numbers about yourself. And not just collecting numbers, but also crunching them, like comparing different data that you collect uh, about yourself. And I do this because I'm really skeptical. I go on the internet sometimes, and they say, I won't believe that this thing is going to make me so smart. And so I don't. And these I actually pulled off the internet. I didn't even have to make them up. Like, these things actually exist. Um, and so instead of just believing what the internet says, I want to start with my own studies. I want to research stuff like, well, Psychologists usually start with an idea that sometimes we'd say, well, duh, to and find completely opposite results. And so I think that coffee makes me more productive. But I have no idea how much coffee makes me more productive, and maybe it just makes me more nervous. So I wanted to collect some data on productivity and coffee. And so, um, right. Uh, and so does anyone here like keep any sort of journal, any diary, any food log, any uh, like journal, or, like a travel thing? Yeah, no, uh, it's a lot of hard work and to sit there every single day and type in a bunch of things. But you know what? Data mining yourself does not have to be sitting in front of Excel. In fact, we already have all of this data. We've been pouring it into documents our entire lives. Our resumes, our Facebooks, our grocery seats, they already exist. Um, so there's this uh, interesting site that got me started on this, and you guys are a smart audience, and I know you're going to be interested in doing this yourself. It's called Wolfram Alpha, and they're really good at some cool mathematical statistics, and they also have a thing that crunches your Facebook and spits out a bunch of statistics. So, um, so this is my, my, my friends are exactly half male and half female, which is really interesting to know your audience. They're mostly single, and some of them are uh, in a relationship, so... Uh, at least, you know, I, I still have good chances in the <laughs> big section. And this is what I talk about. Um, so I like the fact that I talk that old people rock again. Um, old people rock. <laughs> right, just, just funny stuff like that. But the problem is, this only analyzes my public self. This is what I want people to see me as. If it really knew what I was like, it would look more like this. <laughs> And so for that stuff, I use another tool called 750 Words. And I write my diary in it, and the robots in my robotherapist crunch my diary and tell me what I'm worried about. Like, am I talking more about family or success? Am I anxious? Am I talking about myself, or am I talking about somebody else? And so it gives me all, all, all of this kind of data. So... Um, Oh, whoops, back. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to do that. The, so, so you can do this, all, all, all of this stuff. Um, but why would you want to do this? Well, we know that companies love this data because they can predict your buying habits. And so, um, so, so in, that, in that sense, we can also predict ourselves. We can know from the past what sort of future we're going to thrive in. And most importantly, we understand what that data selfie looks like and how much of that do we want in the public. So if you vote for me, we'll talk more about data mining the internet, data mining other people, and maybe some more about data mining ourselves. Thanks. Woo. So when people um, hear that I work with plasmas, the typical response I get is, that's cool. But by the time my three minutes is up, you should know that the only appropriate response is, that's hot. So in order to understand plasma, we're going to first talk about states of matter. Some of you might have gotten a drink from the um, cafe outside earlier. Maybe there was ice in the drink. So that's two states right there, solid and liquid. Can anyone shout out a third? Yeah. All right, you're all super smart. <laughs> so if we um, take a solid, the ice, and add energy to it, it melts and becomes water. We add energy to the water, we get water vapor, a gas. Now, if we add even more energy to the gas, say heat it to 10,000 degrees, then we get plasma, and that's hot. <laughs> so my, my interest in plasma 
stems from um, two of the key applications. One is that most of the visible matter in the universe is in the plasma state. The sun, for example, is a giant ball of plasma. Now, the sun is quite active, and there are often solar storms that send this hot plasma towards the Earth. When we've been a little unlucky in the past, this results in one of our half billion dollar GPS satellites getting fried, or the entire power grid of the province of Quebec going down. So in order to um, protect our existing infrastructure and enable future space exploration, we want to understand plasmas. A second idea that I'm really interested in is fusion, the process that powers the sun. Given our current energy crisis, it would be really nice to have fusion power plants here on Earth. Now, while I don't have time to go into um, how far we've come on this and um, what we've got yet to do, let me um, say for the record that we can do this, but it depends on how much we as a society want to make fusion happen. So please give me all of your hard-earned government money. <laughs> now, there's a lot more hot stuff here. I haven't discussed, for example, burning questions like, um, how does your plasma TV work? Or is it practical to make a working lightsaber? <laughs> to go on to that stuff and more, I'm going to have to transition to the next state of mindshare. I can do that, but only with the intense heat of your votes. Thank you. <laughs> So everyone, can you please raise your hand if you've ever dreamed before? Anyone? Dreaming? OK, so dreaming is completely nutty. Every night we lose consciousness, and then we wake up in some hallucinated dream world. That's totally nuts, but also really illustrates the point that right off the bat, our minds are set to work in multiple different modes of operation. So why on earth is an oceanographer talking to you about altered states of consciousness and perception? A couple years ago, I've been, well, through the last couple of years, I've been experimenting with different ways of kind of thinking outside the box, you might say. And it was a little bit like Alice walking and stepping through the looking glass and experiencing this whole other world. And learning more about myself and the world around me. So there are multiple ways that we can alter our consciousness through uh, concentration with hypnosis or meditation or through chemical means via you know, alcohol or any kind of psychoactive substances or through breath, through again yoga or meditation or holotropic breathing and through sensory depri deprivation and through you know uh, quiet rooms and uh, immersion tanks. So this is just a, a, a few handful of a couple of these things. But the one that I'm most interested in is psychoactive compounds, or what most people would be considered drugs. <laughs> they have the most interesting and profound uh, potentials and for our society. And not only that, we, medically, we've only just started to scratch the surface of what these compounds can do. Just as an example, MDMA-assisted psychotherapy for PTSD has 86% success rate. That means curing PTSD after two sessions. Curing. Really? And this, the studies that have been done of, uh, for this were by the MAPS, which is the Multidisciplinary Association of Psychedelic Studies. These substances that I'm talking about are not as dangerous and harmful as the war on drugs rhetoric would have you imagine. And as a scientist, I see these data and I see so much potential for the health and many other realms of society. So we have this prohibition on these substances and many other types of altered states of perception, and I feel that it's really actually retarding our progress and our thought evolution. 
The reason why I feel so passionately about this uh, topic is because I've had, through my own experiences, I've gained so much profound senses of empathy and compassion, which the world clearly needs more of in this time. So if you uh, are interested in this topic, uh, please vote for me, and I will tell you more about the science behind these things. Um, I will also, we can set up experiments where you can hack your brain in, in interesting and fun legal ways. <laughs> uh, <ooh. laughs> and, um, and we could even bring in a hypnotist. So um, let's explore this uh, more together and see how far the rabbit hole goes.